to Canterbury. Pete and I are out here with Ruby and we're just having our coffees. But we're going to be taking you on a tour of this suburb, which was named after Vice Count Canterbury. He was governor in 1873. Oh, governor. He was appointed by Queen Victoria then at that time. Yeah, for a couple of years, I believe. Okay. And we're sitting in Theatre Place. Now, that would necessarily mean there would be a theatre nearby. Um, it's not a Hoyts or a Rivoli or anything like that. Um, in fact, it's converted into an antique store. So that's what happens with some of these things over time, but their earlier names remain. So we're around Mailing Street. Mailing Street was um, a whole group of shops which were built around about 1900 onwards. But to be correct, Joe, it's actually Mailing Road. Otherwise, you may not find it in your Google Maps. Okay. Anyway, follow us as we take you on a tour of Canterbury. So for all of my eager followers, and that would include senior, <laughs> <laughs> give me, give us the thumbs up. <laughs> See you on the walk. Bye, senior. standing in front of a Masonic Lodge. I've always been interested to find out a little bit about these places. This particular lodge was built in 1927 to 1928. It's not quite a sect but a group of fraternity brothers who would come together to practice philosophy and it was basically about morals and spirituality so it wasn't based on religion. No women were allowed, and they had very unusual rituals in, in order to get into their community. And a secret handshake, Jojo. Well, possibly, not the one that I would know of. But if for any reason they took their secrecies out and told people, there were very stiff, harsh penalties. One important factor was that they were never allowed to discuss politics or religion. Say you were Catholic, Peter. I am Catholic. Okay, you are Catholic. You could join the fraternity, but your church would not look favorably upon you if you entered the Masonic Lodge. Okay, so you couldn't talk about politics or religion. There must have been a lot of talking about sex. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> here my cameo appearance thank you to all my fans uh, I'm standing in front of what was Malone's Hotel now the hotel itself was built or the building was built around 1889 uh, it was Victorian in construction lovely example of a little tower there as well you'll actually see some Edwardian stained glass windows they were probably added um, some years later now, as we know, the Temperance Society hit Melbourne in a number of districts, and Camberwell was one of those districts. This is Canterbury, just adjoining Camberwell. And so in around the 1920s, hotel actually closed, uh, and it's never reopened as a hotel because we're still in a dry area. But having said that, uh, the building is now occupied by businesses, boutique um, firms, as well as some residential accommodation. Hey, 
today we have a walk down memory lane. Now I would be probably one of the people remembering the Sullivans from 1976 to 1983. If I spent less time watching the Sullivans, my grades at school would have been a lot better. Um, but there was a fabulous little story. Australian family uh, in the war period, the Second World War period, and how they grew up in this particular area. But one of the characters was the oldest son, John, John, John Sullivan. And he met Anna, Anna Kaufman. Uh, and the Kaufmans lived in this particular uh, residence here. It was actually a shop and they ran the local grocer's store. So can you imagine, the Germans were particularly popular in the mid-war period, um, but anyway, you'll have to watch the series to actually see how it all pans out. The parents were incarcerated. That was the Kaufmans mm. for a period of time. It was built around 1912, Joe, and I understand it was the confectioners at that time in the earlier days. Can you imagine the local community coming down to their confectioners here? It would have been a lovely little outing, wouldn't it? It would have been. And who was it built for? I don't know. George Jackson. Oh, George Jetson. Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, he's long. He's a long time gone, but uh, but the memory of his confectionery lives on. This was a classic little series. The mother, of course, was Lorraine Bailey. The father was Paul Cronin. Uh, there were what three boys? The young, the young character Kitty, played by Susan Hannaford, McFarlane. Stephen Tandy. Correct. Uh, appearances were made by Kylie Minogue, Jack Thompson. It was Uncle Jack played by Michael Caton. And Michael was also very famous for his uh, lead role in the castle, or castle, but I prefer to call it castle. And uh, of course there's his classic one-liner, or he has a couple of classic one-liners in that particular show, and that is a man's home is his castle. And Tell them they're dreaming. Welcome to Frognall Mansion, which was built in 1889. Built for a timber merchant by the name of Clarence Hicks. He ended up being quite a wealthy man of that period. And Jojo, the reason why I remember it as being Frognall is because a schoolmate came here and he was part of the air training corps. So this building's had a number of incarnations it, uh, as you say, was a private residence and then it went into institutional use when these big homes fell out of fashion. Um, but more recently, it's been reacquired and is in private ownership. Not only that, Jojo, but the, but the gentleman across the road from the house, he said, he said, and he grew up in his house since 1932, so he's been here for a long time, he said it actually cost them $1,000 every two months to trim this hedge. And how much does that equate to in a year? Well, I can do the math. That's six thousand dollars. That's right. You're the accountant. But I reckon, I reckon, if you can afford to live in a house of this proportion, you can afford to pay for the hedge trimming. Just another little bit of history. Um, the area was very much subdivided with many of these mansions around, and unfortunately, a lot of them were pulled down during the 1960s and 70s. So we lost a lot of the mansions.
Okay, we have come to the end of our walk. We found ourselves back at Mailing Road. Mailing Road, Peter, not Mailing Street. And I hope you've enjoyed the walk, this heritage walk that we've done today. Unfortunately, you're not going to find the information because I've collated this one myself. But anyway, there's plenty to walk around Canterbury and discover for yourself. So, and there's lots of cake and coffee in the area. Bye. Bye for now. Bye.